What's up guys, everything Apple Pro here, and I know that $1,000 is just digging a hole in your pocket. You wanna throw it in Apple's face for the iPhone 10. But before you do that, watch this video. I wanted to talk about the drawbacks of this revolutionary new product. Don't get me wrong, I am completely obsessed with it. I'm so happy this design came to light, but it's not without its drawbacks. So let's talk about those in this video and why you should not buy the iPhone 10. In fact, 10 reasons not to do so. Now, this is something not many people think about. This is a first generation products. I know 10th iPhone, what are you talking about, Philip? But no, this is an all new product from Apple. They said it's going to be leading the next 10 years of design. And with a new product like this, a new line, there will be issues, you know, quirks, nagging, teething issues because of the new display, because of new design. If you remember, the iPhone 4 had the antenna gate, the iPhone 6 had the bend gate where it was a bit soft and no, not in this housing. Obviously, this is a replacement. But with every major shift in design for Apple, there always seems to be a major issue after release. So it's always good to wait it out. Now, for example, for me personally, when you're getting a new car, a new platform that has just been developed, there always seems to be a major issue with it. For me, it was the oil consumption on my A4 fixed in the next year's model. And oh boy, this one does not need to be said, the price, the number one reason why most people will not be buying the iPhone 10. But it's just ridiculous how expensive this thing has got. And by buying it, you're basically telling Apple that that's okay. And really, I don't think it is. I think it's a little bit overpriced for what it is. The competitors have very similar displays at a lower price point because that's essentially what you're paying for with the iPhone 10, the display. And I think it's completely ridiculous to pay $150 just to go from 64 to 256 gigabytes in a phone. I know there is a NAND flash storage shortage that was created by the iPhone 10, but wow, that is just ridiculous. And say you get the entry level iPhone 10 with 64 gigabytes for a phone so capable, so full of so much fun stuff you want to do with that camera, how is it going to last? I think that's just not enough storage for the base model. And I know Apple has the new video and photo codecs to take up less storage on your device. There's iCloud storage if you really need it, but still think about it. You know, you download some games, some apps, you know, record a little video, take some pictures. And before you know it, that 64 gigs is going to run out eventually. So I think it's not enough storage for an entry level model. And one that will resonate with probably a lot of you, the cutout bar. I mean, the sensor bar on the iPhone 10 just takes away away from the even design from that really beautiful display. There was a better solution. A Redditor posted this image, and honestly, I would not be opposed to that, or with software to hide the notch. It just seems that a lot of people are very unhappy with that design, and maybe just another reason on your list to not get it. And one that honestly worries me, going from a plus-sized phone to the iPhone 10, you're actually getting cropped content. So a lot of your images, your video, is going to be smaller because the display is slimmer. It's more in line with the iPhone 7 display. Yes, it's taller, but your content will still appear a little different. And because of that cutout bar, it's actually going to make a lot of your existing apps a pain to look at just because it's going to be in the way. And there's actually a couple crafty solutions for this by some developers on Twitter, which I really liked. So Apple could do some great stuff with the software and with the notch, for example, scrolling, having this you know dynamic scrolling behavior. I think it's really cool. And from another developer, he solved the issue of the scrolling bar, which currently in the simulator just goes behind the notch. That's actually really neat. I would love to have that on my iPhone. 10. Probably not something Apple would do though. And here's one that actually worries me. People that had a chance to view the iPhone 10 hands on are saying the display is not that bright. Compared to the Galaxy Note 8, the iPhone 7 Plus, which has the same rated nits as the iPhone 10 at 625, appears very dim in a very brightly well lit room. So I'm definitely hoping the next generation fixes that. But for now, that's an issue we're going to have to deal with. And the whole Face ID thing. Face ID has its own conveniences. So your fingers are wet or dirty and you can't scan it normally with Touch ID, but it also has its detriments as well. Compared to Touch ID, you're going to have to look at your phone every single time to unlock it. And it doesn't seem as as fast as Touch ID to me, I'll definitely have to test that though. And I really hate the fact that Apple is forcing you to buy things to use your iPhone 10 naturally. First off, fast charging can't be activated without this expensive power brick, and you can't even plug in your brand new iPhone 10 into your MacBook without having to buy an adapter or new cable. And for those still on the fence, here's something to make you a little bit more optimistic about your current device. If you have an iPhone 7 or 6S, these are still benchmark chart toppers. They are incredibly fast. Yes, in comparison to the new one, it's a little bit 
slower seemingly on paper, but has your phone suddenly gotten slower just because the new one came out? I'd also like to point out that iOS 11 is right around the corner here. It makes your device feel different, feel new, something fresh. So if that's what you were looking for, with iOS 11, you'll actually get a new feeling on your existing phone. No need to spend $1,000 just to get that fresh new feeling again. And I'd like to summarize by saying, yes, I personally will still be getting the iPhone 10, but I recognize the flaws. It is not a perfect device just because it's the most expensive and the flagship model right now. It definitely isn't for everybody. So I hope you and me agree on at least a couple points from this video. I hope I'm not crazy on that part, but this is an incredible phone. Don't get me wrong. There are still many reasons not to buy it though.